What's up guys, I'm Josh Mosman. Welcome to This Week in MXA, episode number 191, presented by O'Neill Racing. Thank you guys for tuning in to this episode. A lot going on. Eli Tomac coming back to the races this weekend at the Buds Creek National. Great race to come back to, and we're so excited to have the big number three back on his star race in Yamaha this weekend. Also, Hayden Deegan, big news for him. He can wrap up the championship, and he doesn't have to do much to do so. So we'll talk about that in this video. We also got some drama from the Canadian Nationals this past Last weekend and some crazy stuff going on overseas at the MXGP this weekend. Let's dive into it. Starting off with all the thumb injuries, Eli Tomac is coming back from a Bennett fracture in his thumb, which he suffered at the Denver Supercross earlier this year. So excited to have the big number three coming back to the races this weekend at the Buds Creek National. But the funny thing is, we've already talked about it, thumb injuries. This 2024 is the year of the thumb injury. Cooper Webb, he knows all too well what that's about. He injured the UCL and also Jet Lawrence. He did the UCL uh, tear in his thumb as well. I can relate to those guys. I tore it in my thumb back in 2015, I believe it was. That was the first surgery I ever had and uh, it was a tough one. I tried to ride and before getting it fixed and tried to ride, tried to ride, I just couldn't hold on. And eventually I had the surgery, got it fixed, but even then it took a while to get some strength back and it would go numb and really be hard to hold on to my throttle when I was riding. So I can relate to Cooper Webb. I saw him in pain. Uh, he talked about it in the post-race uh, press release that he kind of re-injured and shocked his thumb in that crash in the second moto at Unadilla last weekend. Hopefully that all is well there. Eli Tomac coming back from thumb injury. He's currently 11th in the super motocross championship and uh, he's going to use these last two rounds to get back up to speed before the last three rounds of the SMX playoffs. Also Jet Lawrence, he's coming back for the last three rounds as well. So thumbs up to three big names back at the track. While we're on the topic of injuries, it is a bummer that Joe Shimoda is out with a broken collarbone now, heartbroken for him. It didn't look like his crash was too tough on TV, but what you couldn't tell was that the track was a few feet higher than the infield and uh, dropping off of the track onto that hard packed water truck road was uh, a bigger drop than it showed on TV. And obviously there's no cushion there. Kind of an awkward fall, but it was good enough to break his collarbone. So Joe Shimoda, tough luck for him. He was looking like he was gonna win Moto2. He was pressuring Levi kitchen early on in the race and also his teammate chance hymas had the biggest crash we've seen in a long time and somehow he was okay from it so glad to see that chance hymas walked away with only a burn to uh, his forearm that's pretty minor for what could have happened hopefully his head is okay too it looked like he uh, rung his bell pretty good but uh, that's the thing with motocross guys uh, keep trucking sometimes to their own demise um, sometimes they have in head injuries and don't want to admit it so hopefully everything's okay with Chance Hymas. It's hard to see a wreck like that and see a guy bounce back up and keep going, but uh, he was on fire, so feel for Chance Hymas. And also feel for Joe Shimoda. Small crash, got injured. Chance Hymas, big crash, seems relatively healthy. Talking more about the 250 class from the Unadilla National, obviously Hayden Deegan and Levi Kitchen battled it out at the front of the pack, one and two, but congratulations to J-League Swole putting Triumph on the podium in third place overall. Huge feat for J-League Swole and also a huge feat for Gary at Marchbanks, who tied him on points. Uh, Jay Leak went 6-4 in the motos. Second moto is the tiebreaker. Garrett Marchbanks went 5-5, and he ended up fourth overall. And also congratulations to Max Anstey. He went 3-8, and he ended up uh, fifth overall. So awesome day for Max Anstey to get that podium finish in the first moto and uh, ride super well. So congratulations to those guys. Now looking forward to the upcoming Buds Creek National. Hayden Deegan has a chance to win the championship, and it looks like he's got a great chance to do it. He has a 70 point lead over Levi Kitchen in second place. And uh, that means that if he scores 7-7, seven, seven, Moto finishes in Moto 1 and Moto 2, 7th and a 7th, and Levi Kitchen goes 1-1, one, one, that'll be good enough for Hayden Deegan to win the championship. That'll be enough points for him to leave there and have it secured going into the finale. Uh, he'll be able to run the number one plate and have no pressure at Ironman. Also, if Tom Vial, he's the only rider mathematically who could still win this championship, if he he goes 1-1. One, one. Hayden only needs to finish a 12th and a 13th to earn enough points to secure that.
carry the championship. So Hayden has a pretty good margin of error coming into Bud's Creek, and we're excited to see how that goes and expecting a big celebration from the Deegan camp this weekend. Next, we have some drama coming from the Canadian Nationals as they just finished their eight round national series this past weekend at Walton Raceway in Ontario. First off, congratulations to Jess Pettis for winning the 450 championship, but the drama comes in the 250 class, Drew Adams. We all saw him dominate at Loretta's this year in the Pro Sport Open and 250 classes at Loretta's, and he's also been racing the entire summer of the Canadian Nationals, trying to get his feet wet and gain some more experience before turning pro with the Pro Circuit Kawasaki team. He won a lot of races up there, but he did not win the championship, and it went down to the last lap. He had some uh, dramatic battles and some uh, brake checking action and some trying attempted takeout action with uh, the championship eventual championship winner Kevin Benoit. If you guys don't know, Kevin Benoit is uh, a legend in the Canadian Nationals and the Canadian scene. He actually retired after winning uh, in the 450 class, but now he dropped back down to the 250 class, kind of came out of retirement, was riding for the Red Bull KTM team up there. He's an awesome rider and he ended up winning the championship, but only by two points. Drew Adams was trying his best to uh, break check him and get him to somehow go down or get past and end up third in the moto. If he would have ended up third, that would have tied the championship and then Drew Adams would have won it uh, based on more race wins throughout the summer. Either way, chaotic racing up there. Drew Adams is now back in California tra training and testing with the Pro Circuit Kawasaki team, getting ready to make his pro debut at Ironman in the 250 class. So we're excited to see how he does fresh off of his Canadian uh, win up there. He won the last round at Walton going 1-1 and also off of his Loretta's wins as well. So good luck to him and uh, congratulations to Jess Pettis. The 450 guys are gnarly and fast. As you guys know, we went up there and raced uh, the Canadian National a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago now, and uh, it was really an eye-opener. Those guys are ripping. Next, let's go over to the MXGP series overseas and talk about the Ducati and Antonio Caroli going racing this weekend. Caroli is coming back for the Dutch GP of Arnhem. Yep, that's right. He's racing in the sand this weekend, making the official debut for the Ducati Desmo 450 at the MXGP series. Series. They've already raced it in Italy a handful of times. Alessandro Lapino's raced it. Antonio Caroli has already raced it, but now he's racing it on the world scene. And we're excited to see how he does this weekend. It's been two years since he raced here for Red Bull KTM at the AMA Nationals. Now he's uh, lining up with the new Ducati this weekend. So pretty exciting stuff. And that's the cool part about the MXGP Championship. It's a prototype series where you can run whatever bike you want. There's no uh, production rule. You guys know uh, Hunter Lawrence raced the 2025 Honda 450 this past weekend at Unadilla and he looked awesome on it. Well, they had to homologate that bike. What does that mean? Honda had to pay over $5,000 to uh, get that bike approved for AMA racing and they had to show that it's available to buy at the public and at the dealership. So because Honda already has a bunch of 2025 models here and available for sale, uh, that's why they're able to go racing with it at the AMA races. So that's the difference between production racing here in the US prototype works bike racing over in MXGPs. You can race any bike you want pretty much over there as long as it meets the regular requirements. Um, so exciting stuff. Also, we can't leave this video without saying uh, a major congratulations or just wow to Kai DeWolf for the ma magical uh, maneuver he made mid-air to save himself from hitting a lapper uh, at the Swedish GP this past weekend. He stuck his arm out, stiff-armed him like an NFL move and uh, stayed on two wheels and kept racing. So I've seen people do that, but it is not very common that that happens and it's definitely even even more rare that that works out and you don't go down or make a serious mistake so Kai DeWolf he's leading the championship over there and he's on fire and he can't be stopped next up we have this new helmet here behind me it's the 60 ATR3 I haven't even been able to ride with it yet because of my injury but next week I'll be back riding and uh, we have some clips though of Ezra Lewis and Josh Fout getting their first impressions with the new helmet initial impressions it definitely has a different feel, especially right in the cheek pads in here. I know they're new and they're not broken in, but up here too, it feels like there's more space. Cheek pads are feel like they're a little more triangulated. I guess from here to here, it feels a little bit lighter as well. Nice. On the noggin. Forehead ventilation. That's the that's the name of the game right now. This is this is good. It's night and day. That's a game changer for me. I sweat a lot, so that's that's huge. Nice. Can't wait to try it on a race day or something like that, but overall feels good, light. I mean, just like any other 6P I've worn, I guess, but nice and light and ventilated. That's the big thing. I like it. Ventilation. What about the 6D helmet today? First time in the new ATR3. 
Uh, big step up. I like it way more than the old one. So. Why? Uh, doesn't give me a headache. Uh, I'll spend a lot of time in the other one and after about an hour, my head would start hurting. Gotcha. Uh, this one I had on all day and head didn't hurt once. Nice. And I wasn't sweating as much, so. Nice. Uh, yeah, pretty good. I didn't even know you had headaches in the other one. Yeah, I, I try not to complain much. But. <laughs> all right, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So overall, lots of stuff going on in the motocross and supercross world. Chase Sexton is heading into Bud's Creek with a 28 point lead. Him and Hunter Lawrence tied on points this weekend. So that means Hunter didn't gain any. Chase didn't lose any. 2-1 versus 1-2 scores. Chase looked awesome. Hunter looked awesome on that new bike winning that first moto. So exciting stuff on a crazy rutted Unadilla national track. I do not envy those guys. Uh, that was an accomplishment for those guys to go as fast as they did on how gnarly of a track that was. Also an accomplishment for Unadilla to salvage a track after all the rain they had on Friday. So looking forward to Bud's Creek this weekend. Sign up for the MXA Fantasy League app and get your picks in today. Congratulations to the winner of last weekend scoring 298 points and winning the $250 shopping spree to Boyson Factory Racing. The winner was Mike Blass of uh, Michael Blass 87. So congratulations to him. Mike Blass, $250 to Boyson Factory Racing. I hope you have a two-stroke that you can buy some new uh, reads for, or maybe you have a four-stroke and you'll buy the new super cooler. Either way, $250 pretty cool. And if you like what we got going on here at Motocross Action, make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with our latest videos. Yamaha YZ450F tested video 2025 model. Kawasaki KX450 just posted those two videos. Uh, a lot of fun shaking down those two models. Hope to see you guys in the next video.